Hi, my name is Matt Walter, and I'm a product manager on Google Analytics. And today, I'm here to talk about modeling in Google Analytics 4. This video is part of a larger training series to give you an idea of how to use Google Analytics 4 in a little bit more detail. For today's agenda, I will first be giving an introduction to modeling in Google Analytics 4. Then I will be doing a deep dive on two modeling features in GA4, behavior modeling and conversion modeling, followed by a recap to finish the session. The measurement landscape has changed dramatically in recent years with the rise of privacy-focused browsers and the decline of cookies. This has made it more difficult to track conversions across different devices and websites and to get a complete view of the behavior of users on your website or app. Modeling is a way to fill in these gaps in data and provide a more accurate picture of your performance. Today, we'll be focusing on conversion modeling and behavior modeling in GA4. The goal is for you to better understand how we build the models, how you can benefit from them, and how they are impacting your reports. By using these models, you can get a better understanding of how users are interacting with your website or app and how they are converting while respecting users' privacy. Evolving user expectations and regulatory and platform changes are challenging the ability to maintain accurate measurement. People's expectations of ads privacy have shifted. People are increasingly concerned about how their online information gets collected and used for advertising. Responding to these concerns, regulatory bodies across the globe are drafting new privacy laws and updating existing regulatory frameworks that are restricting the digital ads ecosystem. At the same time, platforms such as browsers and mobile operating systems have announced or implemented new policies to change the way user data is captured, shared, and measured. They are shifting away from mechanisms that track users across sites and apps by restricting third-party cookies and mobile ad identifiers. As the granularity and precision of event-level conversion data becomes more limited, marketers will need to take action on their measurement strategy so that they can drive performance and ultimately their bottom line. We know that the changing digital ecosystem and the effects on measurement are top of mind for marketers. This is a problem that is affecting the entire industry. As a result, we must pay more attention to measurement as the ecosystem evolves. According to an IAS 2021 Industry Pulse report, 85% of digital media professionals say cookie loss and accurate measurement are two of their top three challenges. The third challenge was cross-device attribution. Previously, we lived in a world of fully observable data. This new ecosystem is dynamic and change is the new norm. If the availability of identifiers will degrade over time, the way we are using these identifiers must evolve as well. These changes are pushing the industry to aggregated and anonymized measurement and data collection. As the ceiling of observable add to conversion linkages continually decreases, the reliance on conversion modeling to provide comprehensive measurement reporting will continue to increase. Even with all the right infrastructure in place, there are still gaps that no one will be able to fill. The data we report in your conversions column is a combination of observable data and model data. Before most of these new regulations and changes were in place, browsers began to restrict third-party cookies the industry was able to provide almost all observed data. The new industry and browser changes have caused a shift towards more modeled data. The composition of the reported modeled conversions will continue to grow as the industry faces more gaps due to browser and regulation changes. Please note this is an illustrative example. This does not reflect the exact breakout of modeled and observed data in a given account. As a result of the changes in the ecosystem, GA4 has been designed to embody Google's industry-leading approach to privacy. Our priority has always been to build solutions to get accurate answers to your questions quickly. However, in a privacy-centric world, we have to answer these questions in new, innovative ways, which is why we are now innovating for a future that is consented, first-party, and modeled. First consented, GA4 allows you to collect and enrich first-party data in a privacy-safe way. GA4's infrastructure is scalable for your business and built for an evolving ecosystem. You can measure a more unified holistic user journey by connecting multiple data sources, app and web, data import and measurement protocol, for example. First party enables you to collect and use first party data to understand and engage your users. By understanding users' behaviors throughout their journey, you will be able to tailor the right experience based on their needs. 71% of consumers now expect to receive personalized interactions. And lastly, modeled. You can enhance your first-party data with modeling to fill in the gaps from cookie loss and measurement restrictions. GA4 allows marketers to preserve behavioral measurement while preserving user privacy.
Google's privacy vision includes privacy-preserving technologies such as conversion modeling, which is resilient to future ecosystem changes. We believe privacy and performance are not at odds with each other and can coexist. These ecosystem changes are an opportunity to build sustainably and to uplevel the entire ecosystem for everyone. Investing in privacy-preserving technologies will establish a foundation for long-term sustainability of the ad-supported ecosystem. There are several types of modeling that are available in Google Analytics to help give you the most accurate vision of your business. First, conversion modeling uses Google's AI to help you measure the impact of your marketing efforts when you can't directly attribute conversions to a traffic source. This will help you fill in the gaps in your data due to changes in privacy regulation and deprecation of cookies. Next, attribution modeling, data-driven attribution, determines how credit for conversions is assigned to advertising touch points. Third, behavioral modeling uses machine learning to estimate behavioral metrics for users who do not consent to analytics cookies. And lastly, predictive metrics help you anticipate user behavior, such as purchase or churn, and we surface actionable insights in GA4. Later in this presentation, we will explore conversion modeling and behavioral modeling in more detail for you to understand how these two models can help you get a more accurate picture of your business. Modeling poses several benefits to your business, including a more accurate view of your performance. Modeling can help you get a more complete picture of your website traffic and conversions when you lose data due to cookies, consent, browser updates, and other factors. It does this by filling in the gaps in your data with estimates based on historical data and machine learning algorithms. Better decision making. Modeling can help you to identify trends and patterns that you might not have otherwise seen and to understand how your website is performing. It helps you to make better decisions about your marketing and advertising campaigns and to allocate your resources more effectively. And lastly, accurate privacy safe measurement. Google Analytics modeling is helping advertisers preserve measurement while respecting user consent choice by enhancing your understanding of the customer journey when observed behavioral and conversion data is not available. For example, with behavioral modeling, if users don't consent to analytics cookies, you are still able to generate important customer insights while respecting your users' privacy preferences. Now let's go ahead and do a deep dive on behavioral modeling. Behavioral modeling for consent mode is only available in Google Analytics 4, and it is not available in Universal Analytics. Consequently, if you use a cookie consent manner, consent widget, or another consent measurement solution, you'll miss data from users who opt out in Universal Analytics. Without modeling, you have a partial understanding of user behavior on your site, with only glimpses into it based on that observed data you have available. Behavioral modeling in GA4 allows you to gain useful insights from your analytics reports while respecting your user privacy, using machine learning to model the behavior of users who decline analytics cookies based on the behavior of similar users who accept analytics cookies. For example, behavioral modeling estimates data based on user and session metrics, such as daily active users and conversion rate, that may be unobservable when identifiers like cookies or user IDs are not fully available. It helps you answer common important questions such as, how many daily active users do I have? How many new users did I acquire from my last campaign? Or what is the user journey from landing on my website to actually making a purchase? Behavioral modeling for consent mode uses machine learning to model the behavior of users who decline analytics cookies based on the behavior of similar users who accept analytics cookies. This allows you to get valuable insights from your analytics reports without collecting any personal information from users who decline consent. When you implement a consent banner, analytics will not drop cookies for users who decline analytics cookies. However, if you enable consent mode and meet the eligibility requirements of behavioral modeling, analytics will use machine learning to model the behavior of these users. The training data comes from the property where consent mode is enabled. Consequently, When modeling is turned on, analytics seamlessly integrates model data and observed data in your reports. For example, behavioral modeling estimates data based on user and session metrics, such as daily active users and conversion rate, that may be unobservable when identifiers like cookies or user IDs are not fully available. Google uses a variety of signals to power behavioral modeling in GA4. To create an accurate, aggregate, and modeled view of customer behavior, machine learning can analyze different observable signals, such as event type, country, region, city, date, time, or other non-identifiable dimensions associated with the device. We are committed to protecting the privacy of our users and Google's behavioral modeling approach applies the following machine learning practices to accomplish that. We use the highest quality of observable data to power and test our models. This data is collected from users who have consented to it being collected. 
Second, we only include model data in our reporting when we have high confidence in the data. This means that we have tested the model and are confident that it is accurate when users have access to model data. And third, we do not use fingerprinting, nor do we allow it on our platforms. Fingerprinting is a technique that uses the unique characteristics of a device to identify it. Because the model is trained on the observed data for your Google Analytics 4 property, your property must have enough data to train the model. To be eligible for behavioral modeling, your property must meet the following criteria. First, consent mode needs to be enabled across all pages of your site and or your apps. Second, consent mode for web pages must be implemented so that tags are loaded before the consent dialog appears. And Google tags load in all cases, not only if the user consents. Third, the property needs to collect at least 1,000 events per day with analytic storage set to denied for at least seven days. And then inversely, you also need to have 1,000 daily user sending events with analytic storage set to granted for at least seven of the previous 28 days. Just as a side note, behavioral modeling starts from the date a given property first becomes eligible. Next, let's talk about what is consent mode. Consent mode lets you communicate your user's cookie or app identifier consent status to Google. Tags adjust their behavior and respect users' choices. Consent mode interacts with your consent management platform or custom implementation for obtaining visitor consent, such as a cookie consent banner. Consent mode receives your user's consent choices from your cookie banner or widget and dynamically adapts the behavior of analytics, ads, and third-party tags that create or read cookies. When users deny consent, instead of storing cookies, tags send pings to Google. If you are using Google Analytics 4, Google fills the data collection gaps with conversion modeling and behavioral modeling. Next, let's talk about the implementation steps to set up behavioral modeling. When you enable consent mode, Google measurement products ensure that a visitor's consent mode state is preserved across the page they visit. If consent is denied, tags that fire do not store cookies. Instead, they communicate a minimum of information about user activity. Consent state and user activity are then communicated by sending for Google Analytics cookieless pings. They are sent from each page of a website where Google Analytics is implemented on load and when events are logged. To benefit from behavioral modeling, you need first to implement consent mode by configuring the default tag behavior and update tag behavior. You may need to follow the troubleshooting steps if you don't see model data after implementing consent mode. First, ensure you are not blocking tags. Unblocking tags allows you to fire cookieless pings while respecting analytics user cookie consent status. We never set cookies when users decline. Also verify that the blended reporting identity is enabled in the user interface. Please note that to stop seeing model data, you can select the observed option as well. Next, let's talk about what this actually looks like in the product. The in-product banner and reporting badge help you understand when data is modeled in your property. The banner will appear at the top of your property's reports and the badge will appear below the green mark if any data is modeled. You can click on the badge to learn more about the modeling process and how it affects your reports. Behavior modeling affects user and session-based metrics and dimensions and conversions in all their respective reports. The following features don't support using modeled behavioral data. Audiences, explorations, except freeform tables, retention reports, segments with a sequence, and predictive metrics. Model data also is not included in the BigQuery export. Model data, if behavior modeling is applied to the property, can be pulled from the API and will provide the same data as the reporting section of Google Analytics at an aggregated level. Behavioral modeling is helping marketers like Nestle to get more accurate insights for their business. They said, behavioral modeling with consent mode in Google Analytics 4 drove a 23% increase in the observable traffic in analytics reporting on European and UK websites. Next, let's talk about conversion modeling in Google Analytics 4. GA4 introduced conversion modeling to recover as much loss and observability as possible by training data on the observed space to model for cases where conversion events cannot be deterministically connected with previous engagement events. So first, what is conversion modeling in GA4? Conversion modeling refers to the use of machine learning to quantify the impact of each traffic sources when a subset of conversions can't be tied to initial interaction. Conversion modeling comes into play when we encounter data that is subject to browser and operating system and regulatory restrictions. 
It helps us assign linkages between traffic sources and conversions where otherwise that linkage is unobservable. Conversion modeling reattributes conversions more accurately. Let's take an example. 100 users are visiting a website and 20 of them are making a purchase. Without conversion modeling, some of the 20 conversions can't directly be tied to previous interactions and would be attributed by default to the direct channel due to factors such as ITP, ETP, or third-party cookie deprecation or other reasons as well. With conversion modeling, GA4 uses machine learning to reattribute conversions to the different marketing channels, including Google Ads, third-party ads, organic search, and email in order to give customers a full picture of how conversions on their website or app are driven. With GA4 conversion modeling, the total number of conversions will not change. Only the attributed conversions for each channel will change. Reports in Google Analytics will automatically attribute conversion events across channels based on a mix of observed data where possible and model data where necessary. So where does conversion modeling actually surface in the Google Analytics 4 user interface? You can access modeled conversion data in GA4's core reports, such as the events report or the conversions report, for example, and explorations that use event scope dimensions. These reports automatically attribute conversion events across channels using a mix of observed and modeled data. Now that we've talked about both behavioral modeling and conversion modeling, you might be wondering what is the difference between the two. Behavioral modeling aims to restore measurement for session and user metrics that are unobservable when users deny analytics cookie storage. The models are trained on observable data from users who have granted proper consent. Whereas conversion modeling was built to model for cases where conversion events cannot be deterministically connected with previous engagement events. Models are trained on observable data to provide more accurate reporting on how conversions should be attributed across channels. Now for a few key takeaways. The first is that the future is consented, it's first partied, and as we've discussed in this series, it's modeled. Behavioral modeling can help you to gain useful insights from your analytics reports while respecting your user's privacy. And conversion modeling can help you to recover as much loss and observability as possible by training data on the observed space to model for cases where conversion events cannot be determined or connected with previous engagement events. Thank you for tuning in today. As I mentioned, this video is part of a larger training series, and there will be more videos to come in the future. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to go to the Google Analytics Help Center online. Or if you're a 360 customer, feel free to reach out to your account representative. Thank you.